Yeah, because I'm an idiot. I have to do a second fucking take on this video. I hate it. And I hate that I don't fucking prepare nothing. But, you know, it's me. So, that's what we don't do. We don't prepare. My name is Fred, and I do the casting couch bullshit. Here we are brutally honest and we swear a lot. If you don't like it, move on to another channel. Don't fucking whine on my channel. I'm going to do five videos. And it's going to be about boosting. And you can apply this to your lawnmower, your bike, your uh, diesel tractor from the 30s or whatever the fuck you want. But me, generally, I like the Mercedes diesel engines and the Ohm 606. So... If you want to apply that on one of those onions, that's awesome. The five topics are like this. Single turbo, compound, sequential, and I can't fucking do this. Uh, and it is twin charge and it's VNT. That's five. I can't do it with this hand because I have a lazy fucking pinky, so it's only four and a half. Uh, so five videos about boosting and this is interesting because most people don't have a clue they they don't get it it's like i buy this old Halset turbo and that's gonna be fine and it's not you know because the technology of your Halset hx40 is from the fucking 50s so I mean, you can modify it. You can make your whole set modern. And that's what whole set did in the HE series. It's... Maybe they moved on to the 80s. <laughs> you know, it's not modern, but for a whole set, it's, uh, it's a big difference. Big leap. Uh, and you can, of course, as I said, you can modify your turbo. You can send it to a rep reputable uh, turbo builder and... And they can, of course, put some extended tip technology, billet, compressor wheel and whatnot in it. And you can have a turbo that actually performs like it's from the 2000s. But enough on that. Uh, people don't care enough, I think. It's not, of course, it's a knowledge thing, but mostly it's... Like, yeah, people use this turbo so I can use it as well. And that doesn't end well because no one in the chain of using this shit is happy. Uh, so that's why we're going to touch scrape on the surface of five boosting options. We're going to start with sequential. And I had a long blah, blah, blah about this in my first take, but I... Uh, I don't know. I don't really give a shit. How many petrol cars are sequentially boosted? I don't know. In my mind, my... Uh, uh, to my knowledge, it's only one. And this car is from the 80s. It's built in Stuttgart. Uh, Germany and um, it says Porsche on it. The Porsche 959 was uh, air cooled cylinder, water cooled head, uh, 2.8 liter, 450 horsepower, all wheel drive supercar that was sequentially boosted. But other than that, I don't really know uh, any other petrol cars that are. They are very modern petrol cars that are twin charge and so on but today we're going to talk sequential and uh, from my knowledge you can put a comment in the comment section about this because I'm probably wrong and I don't give a shit about that but if you have information share it with the world uh, sequential on diesels yeah we have BMW that's like the, um, the main thing I would say they came out with a 335 uh, 
and 5.5 diesels. Some fucking these cars are old now. I don't know, 2003, 4, 5, 2005, maybe. Yes, 2023 now is 18 years. It's fucking 18 years. So it's um, something like that. So it's a long time ago. Let's say 20 years ago. Sounds better. So 20 years ago, BMW came out with a 3.5 and 5.5 diesels. Uh, the first one, 5.5, was 272 horsepower, and later on the wall, 286. Uh, sequential setups, very, very nice. Crude construction from BMW, but cheap to manufacture and works amazingly well. Very little faults. Normally it's just a vacuum hose or something shitty like that. And other than that, they just work. Uh, the big turbo is big enough for almost 400 horsepower. Uh, people will say, oh, I don't know the 420. Yeah, 400-ish. Something. 380, 400, 420. I don't give a shit. So it's a big turbo for a car that has 286 horsepower stock. The small turbo is 46 millimeters. That's like that's very little. I uh, had some, something in Swedish that uh, I couldn't translate, but it's small. So 46 millimeters. That's like good for I don't know 14, 15 horsepower. So it's a very very small small turbo and the turbine housing is very small but you can get away with that when you're disconnecting the small turbo and just using the big one and this is the beauty with sequential with compound you have to calculate a little bit about uh, um, compressor map overlap and what, whatever but here you are disconnecting the small turbo when you get up to boost and that makes it possible to choose a smaller or maybe a more efficient turbo than you would have uh, been able to otherwise uh, I, I don't really recommend people running 46 millimeter turbos on their 606, but you could. You could more or less bolt a 335 kit on your 606 and it would run decently. Uh, however, we are not limited on funds like BMW are, because they're going to make 200,000 of these cars, so every cent counts. And they have to make it cost efficient and it has to be easy to install and so on. Uh, we don't have to think about that. We can, if we spend a hundred dollars more, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's just a hundred dollars on, on, on the total build. It's, it doesn't matter. So we can choose a little bit better turbo, a more efficient turbo. And we can, we can do stuff a little bit better. Than BMW could in the production line. And that is very good for you. And for us. The entire community. Uh, what's, what are the pros and cons. Of sequential turbocharging. It's very little cons. The pros are. That you can choose small efficient turbos. Uh, and the cons. Is like. You have to know how to set it up. That's probably the only con. And that is not that hard. So it's like it has no cons and only pros. It's a very good uh, setup for us. What would I choose on a 606? As a sequential build. I don't know. GT25R? No. No. I would go GBC 
The biggest GBC is 22,350. I don't know what the smaller size is. 2300 maybe it's called. The GBC 20 something. That's a turbo I think I would choose as the small one. And that is very small. But it's a very high tech new turbo that works very good. So that would be a very good small turbo. It doesn't require water either. So it's easy to install for us. The big turbo, depending a little bit on the power we're going to run, but um, S257SXE Borg Warner, that's a good contender if you want to run 500 or less, 450. Uh, those two, I think, would work very good together. A GBC 22350 and a S300SXE, maybe. If you want to go one step bigger, something that would work very well. So, and now I'm talking about turbos that, I mean, with, we have the GBC, so it's like 50% me here. Uh, and then Borg Warner that I don't really like, but they are cheap and you can get them in, in very good sizes for our engines. Like the S257 SXE is, is like... The perfect size uh, is small in in the outer dimensions, but it's it still has a very nice size billet compressor wheel. So it's a good turbo. Limited in power though because it's quite small. But I mean, if you don't want more than five hundred, it's perfect. So sequential turbos. What to think about? How is this, how is it set up? So. BMW do like this. They have a small turbo on top. And they have a very sharp 90 degree uh, downpipe that goes directly into the big turbo. And the big turbo is, is not really a twin scroll, but it has two inlets. So one of the inlets goes uh, to the, and the downpipe goes to one of the inlets. So already when you start your car, the big turbo starts spinning. It can't produce boost, of course, because it's way too little uh, exhaust gases coming out, but it will spin, so it's not stationary. And the more you go, the faster it spins till it hits boost. And it hits boost very, very fast because you are quadrupling the amount of exhaust gases very fast uh, with the boost, the small turbo creates. And then there is a diverter flap, pretty much like, uh, like a quick spool valve, but it's of course not hinged in the fucking middle. Uh, so it's, uh, it hinged, uh, it's, uh, it's hinged offset, so it just moves out of the way. And in that manner you open up from the exhaust manifold directly into the turbo. It's a very, very easy setup and it works amazingly good. So this is sequential turbo one-on-one. We are scraping the surface. Uh, I've given you a couple of good options and you know in, a, in rough terms how it works. And if you stay tuned, we will have another video about boosting in a couple of days and i hope that you have a lot of questions because questions is good i can't cover it all in the videos because the videos would be an hour long and no one watched that so ask me ask me here on youtube ask publicly on facebook or whatever because in the communities the 606 turbo diesel forums on facebook there's a lot of people that want to know. So if, if we have discussions there, everybody will learn something. And that is good because the community has to stay together. We can't split up. That's just how it works. So bye for now. And I hope that 
uh, you will watch the next episode of Boost.